One of the charges brought against God is that God was very unfair in destroying all these Canaanites. When you read about ISIS slaughtering Christian children, women, etc. in the Middle East, it sounds a lot like what God told Joshua to do in the Promised Land. They were commanded to wipe out everything in the within the city walls of Jericho. You have the Old Testament replete with such commands where they were to slaughter every living thing, child, woman, pet, whatever. What is the response then to, to that? The God of the Old Testament is arguably the most unpleasant character in all fiction. A petty, unjust, unforgiving control freak. A vindictive, bloodthirsty ethnic cleanser, genocidal, filicidal, pestilential, megalomaniacal, sadomasochistic, capriciously malevolent bully. You think that's what happened? Oh no. They say, you know, God had these favorites, these Israelites, and he decided, oh, there's a nice piece of real estate over here, the land of Canaan. I think I'd like my fair-haired ones to live there. Too bad that seven nations are already here. We'll just go ahead and slaughter them all and, you know, clear the land for uh, the Israelites. You think that's what happened? Oh, no. Canaan was the grandson of Noah. And the Canaanites knew the truth of God, and they had rejected the truth, and they had turned God into such a monster. They, they preached that the God, the true God, he loved it when they took their babies and threw them into the white, hot arms of Moloch. They had this hollow bronze God called Moloch and they would build a fire inside Moloch until his arms were white hot, and then they'd throw their babies into the arms of that idol to the beating of drums and the screams of the babies. Can you imagine that they were telling the world that the God who is is that kind of a monster? And God said, I can't take that anymore. Now, God had warned the Canaanites. God had sent Melchizedek to them. He sent Abraham to them and Isaac and Jacob. And they had lived in that land and had worshiped and spoken of the true God. And everybody knew they worshiped the true God. You remember when the city of Sodom was taken, the people were taken off, four kings of the north came down and took them off into captivity. And one man escaped. Now there were all these city-states all through there and they all worshiped all different gods. And this man escaped. Who do you think he went to to get help? He came to Abraham. Now Abraham didn't have a city-state. He just had about 300 men in his little militia. That's a, that's a really big militia. That's a really small army. But what that man was saying who escaped was this. This is a job for God. And you know something? Abraham and his 317 men, they rode up way up north of Damascus and Syria through the night, and they engaged the enemy before dawn, and they rescued everybody. It was God who did it. And they knew that. They knew that Abraham worshiped the true God. But they didn't worship the true God. They turned their backs on him. And so God patiently waited and all the way through um, the years that the children of Israel were in Egypt and all the days when they were wandering in the wilderness, God patiently waited for the Canaanites and he revealed himself. The Canaanites heard what God did to the Egyptians and what did they do? Did they bow down and worship him? No, they got ready to fight against him. But even so, when the the children of Israel came in and they were going to execute the judgment of God. God said, now six of these seven nations are ripe for judgment, but one of them isn't quite yet ready. The cup of the Amorites is not yet full. It's like each nation has their own cup and they fill it up with their own judgment, their own wickedness. And then one day God just says, I think this is yours and he turns it over and gives it back to them. All the wickedness 
is all being collected. And we read about it in the book of the Revelation, don't we? And God takes these bowls and he just gives it back. Every ounce is coming back. Nobody gets away with anything, you know. So God patiently waited for the Amorites. How long did he wait? because they weren't quite ready for judgment. Well, he waited through all the days of Joshua and all the days of the judges and the days of Eli until finally, after Samuel and the days of King Saul, God said, okay, now the judgment's ready. And I should point out to you this, that in the same way that the judgment of God on the Canaanites coincided with the children of Israel coming out of the land of Egypt, so the judgment of God on Israel coincided with the rise of the Assyrian nation. And the judgment of God on the nation of Judah coincided with the rise of the land of Babylonia. God doesn't have different sets of rules, you know. God is holy. God is just. And nobody gets away with anything. Don't don't be fooled. God is not mocked. Whatever a man sows, that shall he also reap.